don't go too much into detail about my stuff, but this is a fancy little program, so it's like, oh, I'll fun with this. I just want to acknowledge the fact, too, that Alex and I planned this event uh, where all good academic work gets planned at the pub, and I'm surprised <laughs> that it's, it's actually become, uh, it's what it is now. So. Uh, so my name is Mike Belovich. Uh, I'm an honors archaeology student. I'm also the student president of the Archaeology Student Society. Uh, I'm going to present some of my honors research findings. Uh, so you see my project is called Following the Shore Using Handheld Portal Extra Fluorescence Spectrometry to Reconstruct Land Use Strategies in the State of Watershed, British Columbia. Uh, this is uh, work under Dr. Rudy Reimer, and it's in conjunction with a bunch of heritage management works from uh, Dr. Dr. McLaren from UPIC. So for those who don't know, this is the this is Vancouver, Greater Vancouver area. The little circle is the state of watershed. It's about uh, it's three areas, three lakes, two reservoirs, and one delta. So it's um, the state of reservoir, the Hayward Reservoir, and the state of delta. And it's, it was dammed in 1912, uh, and the damming has flooded the area of flooded 29 kilometers squared of area, uh, which was archaeologically important prior to it being dammed. Yay. <laughs> so, in my project, I've been using handheld X-ray fluorescence, which is a method of geochemistry. And it looks like a ray gun, but what it is not, it is not sci-fi, it's in fact real science, it's not <laughs> Kirk Holes. Um, it works through a process of a machine firing higher energy electrons into a, an element uh, into the KL and M shells of the element, and these elements will eject um, electrons at a certain uh, power setting, and that is measurable, and that is known as fluorescence. And each element will produce the same, or will produce these chemical fingerprints prints that you can use to uh, determine rock material types. Um, it's used on art to determine fraudulent art uh, in rocks and metals for mining and ore, uh, so it's exciting. Uh, that is why I said it's not X or it's not like Captain Kirk's gun because it looks like a ray gun and when you turn it on it makes a horrible horrible noise and it does not shut up until you're done because it has to warn you that you're being irradiated. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> uh, but what is it good for? Because um, as archaeologists we want to use it in things that are going to actually affect humans. So humans, uh, especially in prehistoric times, like rocks. Namely, we like Obsidian, because obsidian is shiny, it's nice, it's pretty. Uh, we like chert and flint because it's shiny, it's nice. And, <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much any rock that comes from an extrusive origin, of a, any igneous rock of extrusive origin, uh, it's because obsidians and extrusive rocks have a very homogeneous nature. And they're very easily worked by people to make into tools. Uh, so is CHIRT, but CHIRT is far from homogenous, which was a fun part of this project, was to be at the forefront of determining how to do uh, geochemical analysis on archaeological CHIRTs, which was all accidental. So my assemblage that I worked on was 220 artifacts, uh, and these encompass uh, 12,000 years, uh, give or take, uh, of human occupation, and this is continu continuous human occupation. Uh, these sites in this area represent some of the earliest uh, migrations into southwestern British Columbia. Uh, um, so some of our preliminary results on our project were, when I was looking at uh, our igneous materials, I was able to determine three material groups, um, and these are from Anvil Island, uh, it's an andesite, it's within Howe Sound, uh, Watts Point of Basalt, which is uh, also in Howe Sound near Squamish, and Arrowstone Hills, Dasalt, which is out by Kamloops. Uh, as I said, I had to be at the front of doing X-ray analysis, XRF analysis on shirts. Uh, and this graph shows two distinct groups which are representative of a very fine quality glass-like red shirt and a very gray fibrous calcedony, which was very exciting because I thought this didn't work and I plugged three random elements in and there you go. Uh, and it helps and it was very nice and this was repeated multiple times. And then finally we have our unknown materials. 
Now these materials are five groups, uh, possibly six. There's, there's some overlapping with other things, but these all have morphological and visual characteristics that are similar, are similar to each other. So what does this mean? Well, we were able to determine from this that people in the state of watershed were moving up the Fraser River and along House Sound, which is somewhat commonsensical for archaeologists, is what we all have determined. But this has shown uh, proof, uh, undeniable chemical proof. And what's important is that this is not just uh, recent things. This is happening in a very dynamic environment where the Fraser River is uh, emerged. There's an the emergence of the Fraser Delta. Uh, the melting of glaciers, the changing of shorelines, and we found that even as far back as 12,000 years ago, these two routes were being continuously used. So there's uh, trade and uh, kinship systems and communications between both coastal and interior areas, which supports the fact that the state of watershed lies in between these two uh, cultural regions, and it's working as a mediator for trade and for uh, communications between the two. Uh, and to conclude, we were able to determine that people were using, as I said, up in the front is the uh, King Kong Obsidian. Uh, number two on that map is Arrowstone Hills Dacite. Uh, number three is Mount Garibaldi Obsidian. Number four is Watts Point Basalt. Number five is uh, Anvil Island Andesite. And the blue circle is the state of watershed. And as I said, there's a lot of, um, a few, several unknown um, categories, which are representative of chert groups uh, and igneous materials. And it's undetermined where those are from because there's just no real data for that, but likely the chirts represent coast, interior plateau areas, and whether or not the igneous material represent on-site or local things, we imagine it follows this trend of going to the north along the Fraser River or along House Sound. Question? Excellent.